back to the Bob Harden Show. And now here's your host, Bob Harden. Thanks so much for joining us here on the show. It's brought to you in part by the good folks at Johnson's Air Conditioning, Naples' longest established air conditioning company, as well as Golf Shore Playhouse, bringing you professional New York-style theater at its very best. Visit the website, Golf Shore Playhouse. Uh, .org. Coming up, we're going to visit with David Bigo. He is the author of The Devil at Our Doorstep. Right now we have with us Dr. Zudi Jasser. He's also an author. He wrote the book uh, The Battle for the Soul of Islam. He's also the founder and president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. No, it's great to be with you, Bob. Thanks for having me back. Always a pleasure, Doctor. And for our listeners that may not be familiar with the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, what's its mission? What's it all, what's it all about? Well, our mission is to counter the root causes of terrorism, not just the symptom of terrorism, but rather the root cause. And we believe Islam is in that time in history in which it needs to reform and counter political Islam. So our mission is to defeat theocracy, it's to protect the Constitution through the separation of mosque and state and movements like the Muslim Brotherhood, the Islamist movements, political Islamic parties, are the root cause of radicalization and violence committed in the name of Islam. And our goal is to sort of take Islam through that reformation. A big task indeed, and uh, the battle goes on. In fact, just this weekend, uh, Secretary of State Jay Johnson gave a talk uh, to the American Islamic let me see. Was I forgot the name of the organization now? But irrespective, Islamic Society, Islamic Society of North America, kind of, and it's being described as somewhat of a spinoff of the Muslim Brotherhood. It's kind of disturbing to me that we have an executive of this administration speaking to what I think could be classified as uh, our organization that supports the exact opposite of what you want. Yeah, it really is is beyond maddening for the. You know, this is not just sort of the. Uh, outreach person. This is the head of Homeland Security, or mm. rather now it should be Homeland Insecurity. Uh, you know, the Islamic Society of North America is the largest organization as far as conventions go. They have 50,000 people that he went and spoke to uh, that meet annually. In my book, I talk about my own experience with them, and I can tell you I talk about how in 1995 I went there and uh, did not, you know was presenting a paper at the Islamic Medical Association, and then happened to go to that meeting. And their keynote address was done by Siraj Wahaj, who is a uh, uh, Islamic uh, cleric and preacher who uh, was giving a sermon. And at that sermon, talked about how it is the role of Muslims to change the U.S. Constitution to the Quran, and that the Quran should be the Constitution, and that's why this country is is a deviant nation because it doesn't follow the constitution of the Quran. And I listened to that and thought, and then basically said publicly at the meeting that I thought that that was sedition and that this organization is not American in what it's doing, and uh, protested it and, and then left. And uh, especially as a naval officer that I was bitten, I was there in uniform. So, uh, and, th- and they would tell you, oh, that's 20 years ago. Well, they are the sort of mothership organization of Muslim Brotherhood legacy groups in America. Uh, they hatch the, you know, they were hatched by the Muslim Student Association. Uh, they have a lot of crossover with a lot of Islamist groups, like the Council on American Islamic Relations. They have never joined reformist um, activities of ours. Uh, they uh, never will even use the term Islamism and make connection between groups like Hamas and terrorism. Uh, and in in the 2008 trial that ended up convicting six board members with the Holy Land Foundation uh, for funding Hamas, they were considered an unindicted co-conspirator. Mm. And, you know, the key, Bob, is if you listen to the speech that Jay Johnson gave and look at it online, it, is, it, it just horrifically compares the plight of Muslims to the plight of African Americans uh, in America, which is so different. I mean... Uh, it is insulting, and I think this sort of bigotry of low expectations to say that Muslims in America are victims and that we don't have a role, really, in leading the efforts to counter radicalization, that instead, no, we're the victims, and that there really isn't a problem of terrorism at all, which is just absurd. Mm. 
And, and, and again, this uh, th- that very much parallels the attitude of this administration. And it, it's quite concerning because it, it's doing nothing to deal with the true problem, which, of course, as you're mentioning, it's, it really is a function of reform within the ris- or religion of Islam. Yeah, and, you know, if you look at why Homeland Security, now the largest agency in government, 15 years after 9-11, was formed immediately within a few years because of the desire to counter the problem. And, in fact, the reason it's become the largest is it's really this sort of uh, uh, sophisticated whack-a-mole program where they uh, try to predict when somebody becomes violent without ever saying it has anything to do with theology or theocracy. And, And you just can't counter that. I mean, imagine in the Cold War that we would try to counter the threat of Soviet imperialism and Soviet military hegemonization of the planet without uh, identifying communism, without identifying Soviet war theory, and and that would be absurd. And yet with Islamism, you have the head of Homeland Security basically telling the group that sells books that say that uh, apostates should be killed, that women don't have equal rights. I mean, the books on Islamic law that are distributed at that convention Mm. are not moderate. They're not compatible with American ideals, and yet we as Muslims are being told by this administration that the ideal organization uh, to speak to on behalf of Muslims is the Islamic Society of North America, and I, I find that insulting. Uh, it is indeed. And, Dr. Arswani, we're here 15 years uh, from 9-11 in a couple of days. It'll be uh, the 15th anniversary. I wanted to get your thoughts and commentary about how we've responded to and what's happened since that time. Well, you know, I have to tell you that and, and this year the, it happens that our largest Islamic holiday is Monday, uh, and it almost fell exactly on 9-11. Uh, and you see sort of this crossover of two major worlds that now 15 years we still are stuck not even being able to to identify the cancer, let alone treat it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it tells you that uh, while we did kill bin Laden, we did find him and kill him, and, and that was one accomplishment. It certainly, uh, we've seen the hatching of a much greater threat to uh, the the world, which is the Islamic State in uh, Iraq and Syria, uh, and that Islamic State is another byproduct of basically political Islam. And you know, the opening of my book, I said, you know, right after nine eleven, I wanted to reenlist and go get those, you know, yeah, uh, I do those know. bastards. And and um, yet, we still almost a generation now. My son was born a few years after 9-11, and he's in high school now. And so this generation, there's, uh, you know, four, he's 14 years old, wasn't even alive at that time, and yet they really don't understand what that was. It was the greatest uh, attack on our soil since World War II, and yet we have no consensus, not even close in America, what the threat is, where Islam is in its time in history, and what we should be doing from a counterterrorism, counterradicalization perspective. Instead, it's called countering violent extremism rather than countering violent Islamism. And uh, bin Laden was not the problem. You know, he was simply a symptom. Right. The problem is all the, or- the states that we consider allies that are actually the root cause, the cauldrons for radical Islam. Doctor, uh, who, in your opinion, based on your position and your uh, movement for the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, would be the best president of the United States elected in uh, November 8th? Well, you know, I try not to get political uh, with our, our nonprofit. We don't take stands on these things. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think the, the issue is it's interesting when we when we talk about candidates, uh, we domestically we say the the establishment candidates are the problem, uh, and I would tell you when you look at the threat, uh, the threat domestically is coming from abroad. So the candidate that's working with the establishment globally is the problem, and certainly with the Clinton Foundation's funding from Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and relationships with appeasing the the Islamist uh, um, uh, movements, Hillary's very problematic. I, I still haven't seen that Mr. Trump is not affiliated with the establishment, uh, his, his comments about Russia and Putin and 
And uh, his inability to really identify Saudi Arabia as a problem makes me concerned. But yet, you do see at least there's an identification, a willingness to take on the problem there that uh, Hillary has not shown. Mm. So, you know, I would tell you in this war, um, we're looking for folks that want to identify, a leader that wants to identify freedom and liberty as the solution and not just identify problems. So um, it's almost a situation where you're looking at the lesser of evils from from where I sit, but, you know, I'll leave it to the American people. We have a third candidate yesterday that didn't even know where Aleppo was. Yeah. Uh, Gary Johnson thought it was some kind of acronym. Yeah. And as someone who has family in Aleppo dodging barrel bombs from the Russians and from Assad, it's horrific that a candidate uh, who almost has 10% of the vote didn't even know what that city was. All right. Now, doctor, I uh, apologize, first of all, for putting you in that position. I recognize that uh, as a not-for-profit, you're not supposed to make those types of uh, decisions or, or statements, but irrespective, I genuinely appreciate your commentary here in the show. I want to just commend your book, The Battle for the Soul of Islam, to our listeners. I also encourage our listeners to visit uh, the American Islamic Forum for Democracy website, aifdemocracy.org. Uh, Doc, you, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Rob. It's always great to be with you. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, coming up, uh, we're going to be visiting with Dave Bigo, the author of The Devil at Our Doorstep. That and more right here in the Bob Harden Show on the Bob Harden Broadcasting Network. Stay tuned for more of the Bob Harden Show here on the Bob Harden Broadcasting Network. 